Hello guys, this is Jadas, the head and core of Grow90 community. So in this tutorial, so this is, uh, I'll be teaching you about the authentication implementation. So in the last tutorial, I have already explained you how, how does the authentication works. So in this tutorial, I'll explain you how to implement those authentication in Node.js platform. And uh, yeah, and how to use the libraries which will help you in creating those authentication. Uh, I mean, in your Node.js server so let's get started so first thing you need is an express uh, express builder or you you should have a library express cli for your uh, generation of X, that uh, starting template so i have already uh, in shown in the previous tutorial how to create your own demo uh, sorry how to create your own starter template and yeah and to, now i'll explain you how to implement that authentication in that starter template so yeah let's get started open create and uh, we'll just so there are no projects let's see what we can do Okay, so we'll start by creating. So if you are using any other IDs, so you don't have these options. So in my ID, it has an option because it already it already has a plugin through which you can already use the Express app generator. So yeah, so if you don't have this one, you can install app Express generator and then generate the project. So in the last tutorial, I have shown you how to generate the projects. So in this tutorial, I'll tell you how to install all those libraries using which you can create this authentication server. So let's start. We we will generate the new window. We'll generate the our starter template. Yeah. So before that, you should have a database. Without database, it doesn't work. So last through the last i mean in the first session itself i have shown you how to put up your database so we'll use the same database in our case and set up this authentication server so for us we'll use heroku as our database for now you can uh, use any other database like sql postgres uh, and uh, there are many other mongodb too so yeah so in this example you can see here i have used mongodb as my databases but uh, yeah so if you want to use mongo you can use it doesn't any anyway matter so okay so let me boot up my database server it's an op it's an open database yeah yeah so my database is booting up and uh, what i will do now i will i'll tell you about what all packages are required so last last time i have explained you uh, all those black packages that that will be uh, required while uh, you are uh, i mean creating this template that, I need uh, so for dev development de dependencies. I mean the dependencies which will be used while you are doing development is node one. I want to use two point three point zero three. I'll do an npm install. Yeah. So first library that we'll be using is uh, so we'll be using it's known as uh, so the first library that we will be using is known as bcrypt or the library which will be used for hashing this password so yeah so check the documentation of this bcrypt if you go to uh, google and type bcrypt it will show some options so you go to bcrypt npm 
npm as i have already mentioned is in package manager so you go to np crypt npm and it will tell you uh, how to use the big grip yeah so that's how you use big grip as as uh, it already uh, it's there in the documentation but i'll tell you how to implement it anyway so first way first thing i'll do is i'll add up this library for adding up it's very simple just go to the package.json file and uh, you can edit up like that you want to know this uh, version number you can go to the npm site and check down there there will be small written 4.0.1 other way around you can try using this you can copy it and then paste it in your terminal so just go to the terminal and paste like this and pmi bigrip save so what it does it automatically install the bigrip library also it uh, it indexes in your package.json file so so you can use this command if you are not having webstorm or you can directly do what you can do you can directly add up the library and uh, you can add up this library in the package.json file and then go to the terminal and run npm my so the other way around it works so you can do anything now the bigrip is added so what we'll do we'll use uh, node fetch i mean uh, for doing the quest so there is uh, one more library which is known as node fetch which is very important because uh, while you are doing any kind of request to the server node fetch is very much required so without node fetch you can you can use the request so there is one more library which is inbuilt in the node js is a request but in the uh, due to some security reasons the request library is uh, deprecated right now you have to remove the request library if you are using so because for some security reason they have removed the library from the node js so you will be using node fetch because we already know the we already are familiar with the way how fetch works since we have used in the front end so so yeah yeah so yeah we'll be using node fetch also and how to install it the other way around i'll show you you can go to the terminal section and uh, type nordfetchi and give uh, and use this save command so npmi nordfetch then give this save command what it will do it will automatically install so it is installing and also to load up in your package.json so you can see it they added added in my package.json also so here it is node fetch so right now my service server is ready and i can use this node fetch library yeah and also you need this thing so every time you make api you need to share with your team so there is a uh, beautiful software known as postman so what using postman you can do you can share the apis whatever apis you create you have to share it with the other developer without that it doesn't work so postman gives you a very uh, i mean user friendly uh, tools so which you can use to test your apis also you can use it for sharing the apis that is yeah so it's very much useful what i will do yeah so first thing i'll do is uh, go to their uh, hasura and i'll create as i have mentioned in the earlier authentication uh, lecture that how the user table works so i'll create i'll create a user table so i'll give it an id so i'll add an id which is uuid okay so i'll add a new uuid then i'll add email id 
and uh, then yeah, I'll give it a type string. Yeah, so and then I will add a um, hashed password. It is also a string, and I'll use a random string. Yeah, and I'll use an auth token. Yeah, and uh, I mean auth token thing is not that necessary, but yeah, refresh token is also necessary. I mean. So pretty much done. If you don't use auth to token, it's completely fine. You don't have to use this. Uh, but I prefer using auth token in me in my database because I don't have to uh, just create the auth. I mean, just check the auth token with the library. I can directly check the database and do whatever I can. Uh, I can like uh, if I want to check the user is correct or not i can directly check the authentication token and uh, yeah that will automatically tell me the user is correct or not so yeah that's what so yeah now what i'll do is uh, we will we will do we'll do we'll do yeah so we'll add the table this will generate the table and also we'll go there We'll create a mutation query. That means I will insert the user. So whenever a new user is created, I have to insert the user. So I will add, uh, I will add hash password. I'll add random string. I will add uh, email. Yeah, so these three are very important. So, and I'll take the affected rows. So what this query does, it will, insert into user table hashed password random string and email id and it will return me back the number of rows that has been affected for for single user creation there will be one row that will be affected so yeah just you can test it out by giving some random hash password random string some random mail id and you can check that yeah not null valuation of auth token so what the issue is here is like authentication token cannot be null so in that case you have to make your auth token and refresh token null nullable so what does that nullable means you have to go to the modify and and also allow the auth token that it can be null so if you make it as a false, it cannot be null. So anytime you want to insert insert data, you have to give authentication token also. But I want to make it null level. So every time I insert data, doesn't need doesn't uh, need to create an authentication token or a flash token. So that's why I'm making null level for both of these things. Yeah, and uh, and 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 I'll open the inspect element right last time. Whatever I did, so similar thing I'll do. Uh, I do such kind of thing because it makes my task easier. I mean, I don't have to create the entire query in the code itself. So that's why you can create the query in the code itself. It's, it's very simple. You just have to make uh, the body and the header and the footer. So that's simple only. But I read I rather such I rather uh, feel like generating it. So I copy the curl and then I import it and paste the row object. I copy this. Okay, so if you go to the body, you see that this thing will give you error. So remove this thing and go to the GraphQL part and paste it. So, yeah, so if you paste it and now you send it, 
you can see affected rows equal to one. So now what you can do is, uh, so what I did right now is very simple. I just created the query by doing this kind of click and drop and all those things, which you can go through the Explorer and learn. Very easy, it's very easy to write query in this GraphQL database. In Mongo also, you can do the similar thing. I'll share you this code where you can go to the server side and see what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, and it's very simple. If if you use this, uh, I mean, if you use GraphQL, so it's very simple. You can create the query very easily. After that, you can do a network call. While you're doing the network call, open your inspect element. And when you do the inspect element, you will see there will be a network call transaction going on. So you just have to copy the transaction as copy as curl and then paste it on your postman. So go to the import, import and paste row text. So once you paste the row text, you will see it will be your query will be in the row, but you don't have to uh, insert your query in the row because uh, the request you are doing doesn't accept row queries you have to specify it's a graphql queries then you have to copy this query and paste it here so once you paste it here you can see if you run it will give you affected rows equal to one because uh, that means your postman query is working now if you go to the data and check the user you'll see two users created yeah so there is one chat from what exactly postman does okay so postman is nothing it's a software uh, i mean it's an it's a platform through which people can collaborate and test their apis you know apis right apis are the endpoints or it's a it's a connection between multiple applications so what api is like there are multiple apis like rest apis soap apis and uh, like graphql apis and all so using postman what you can do you can do all those kind of requests and uh, check whether your API is working or not. So if you see there are multiple APIs here. So for me, I'll check, check once. So let me check, let me check. Google API college. Okay, this is all sensitive data, so I can't share you any example out of this. But let me tell you, like it's 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 a platform through which you can do all those requests, post request, get requests, and put requests. All those requests, which which you can do using your JavaScript, but uh, you can't do only directly in your browser. So that kind of request you can do in the Postman, and once the request is done. Yeah, so I'll give you a brief intro about Postman. So once you install the Postman, you will have this entire dashboard kind of thing and uh, you won't have anything. So someone is asking me to give the brief intro. So I'll give you a brief intro about Postman. So let me not save it. So I'll close it. So first thing when you open the Postman, so it will tell you to sign in because uh, every request is saved in your account. So once you sign in, you don't have to care about uh, storing your request because it, it will automatically store the request. So yeah, so it will tell you, it will show you this launch pattern on th all those things, create an API. So these things are advanced uh, tools which we might not re require. What you can do, you just have to cross it down and uh, you'll see there will be left side, there will be the entire uh, column of request or the entire request you have done you can do history and check the request which you have done and there will be apis and all so leave all those things you don't have to do you have to do is like import import means you have to get your requests from some other uh, some other type so what i'll do i'll go and do import and then i'll paste row text so in the paste row text you have to paste the curl request so as i have mentioned in the previous webinar that whenever you do a request uh, in this browser there will be one transaction going on with the server so this server or the database server is in 
uh, Heroku in, is in Heroku environment, so it's not in my laptop. So it's in some way other, uh, like any other uh, place. So like you have to send data to that to that server, right? So using my browser, what I do, I send data. So when I send data, this does a transaction in the network. So you can see the one more transaction happened. So what I can do, I can copy that transaction as a curl. So curl is a standard way of copying requests. I will copy the curl and I will paste it in the import place of Postman. So what I will do now, if I do import, so what I'll do, see if you import it, it will show you a request, I mean, uh, options so what are options you can give so every request has an header it has an uh, header it has a params authorizations and everything mostly for our case we'll be using headers and body so this is the request this is the uh, address at which we'll be doing the request so what do we have to do we have to change the header and the body every time we do a request so you have to remember that uh, your request only have to do only changes you have to do you can do only in the header and the body so just remember that and uh, other thing you can do but it's not mandatory so now what happens when i import it it copies the entire query in uh, in the raw 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 place so if we, if i copy the entire query in the raw place the server fills it as a string and it doesn't does any kind of query. It tells you that the query thing is very, it's not understandable. So if you see failed reading and yeah, invalid JSON. So yeah, so server doesn't understand what's going on. So it says you, it's an invalid query. So what you have to do, you have to specify that your query is a GraphQL query. So you have to remove this copy the entire query and paste it here yeah now you can see that it's a graphql query and also uh, also this server understands that this is a graphql query because you have already specified it here so now when you do the send it will do the query and it will tell you that one row has been affected yeah, and it's completely done. So you don't have to confuse because you are not using any uh, other advanced tools. You are just using import tool. You have to import it, paste your raw text that has been copied from your browser's network tab. Maybe you are using Chrome or Firefox, doesn't matter. You will have a network tab. Just go there, right click on the net transaction that has been happened, copy that, paste it here, and you will get this, change it to GraphQL. And then you can, uh, yeah, and then you can check whether the query to the database happens or not. So once you check all those things, now what you can do, you can see there will be small things written there, code and cookies. So you can go to the code, code section and it will show me some of the options that are available in the uh, code sections. So for me, there is, uh, I mean, Node.js native uh, request. So it transformed that request into a uh, code so that you can use it in your backend server. So for my case, if I use Node.js request, so no, I can use this Node.js request, but the thing is request is deprecated. So right now, if we use request, automatically the NPM community will mail you and tell you that you are uh, you are just breaking the security law and you should not use request in your app. So recently I also received that. So I'll show you in the mail. Yeah, so you will say, they will say that. So you don't have to use request. What you will use is, we'll use uh, uh, this thing, fetch. So fetch is also very, uh, it's a it's a inbuilt request library in your browser itself, uh, but it's not inbuilt in the Node.js environment. So you have to install this Node fetch, and using Node fetch you can easily use it. So 
I guess initially there used to be an option, so directly you could have copied that node fetch, but right now it doesn't have. Let me see if it's there or not. Copy as fetch. So you can see you can also copy it directly from here instead of importing it into your Postman. You can copy as fetch and yeah, we'll use it in our. Okay, so this await and all you don't know actually. So let's not go it in that way. We'll go it in this way. So we'll understand the library of node fetch. So, so I'll tell you. A JavaScript always has a whenever you are doing some kind of uh, synchronous task or you are doing some kind of task which needs waiting. I mean, JavaScript doesn't work in a synchronous way like the C++ PHP. So in C++ PHP or any other like Python, what happens? You have to wait until the previous task is completed. But for JavaScript, it works as a uh, it's it works in asynchronously. For example, it will have some kind of timer, which will uh, always tick. I mean, it will check the uh, it will check whether the function is completed or not. If not completed, it will go to the next function, uh, and it will try to complete the other function. So, if it is an asynchronous processes, what benefit you get is like you don't have to wait for the previous function to get over. So, for example, you, you are having a restaurant. Now, if your restaurant is synchronous, you have to wait till the previous order is fulfilled. So, in that way, if you see, none of the customer uh, will be satisfied because every time uh, an order is taken, he, he or she have to wait till the previous orders has been uh, fulfilled. But in a synchronous way of maintaining the restaurants, it will be like if a order is done, so he will go inside and uh, try to cook. Similarly, one more guy, or if one more customer comes, he will take the order of the second one, also third one. So he, he will do everything in an asynchronous manner. So for JavaScript, it works in asynchronous manner. Uh, so the issue comes when you are doing some kind of synchronous job. So for example, if you are doing a request, so you can't make it an asynchronous job because if you do asynchronous job, you won't get the data and you will start to uh, do processing of those data. So you should wait till the data comes and then use it for your purpose. So as you can see, we'll, uh, as you can see here, it's is it. So there is a then, then. This kind of notation means, uh, so what is then means, it, it will stop, it will, it will, uh, stop till the fetch is done and then it will uh, do this function so yeah so if you don't use then so there will be callback functions i mean uh, it will be called when the entire function the previous function is done so you can put your next callback function in a chain so this is why then is used and yeah and uh, if you have any errors you can catch it using dot uh, catch something like that i don't know but we'll see so yeah so this this kind of program where you are using then that means it's a synchronous way so what we'll do we'll fetch it we will use this yeah and we will post it here and we need to use the fetch library so yeah so javascript every year it updates so you should you should know which okay so dot then is a new way of implementing uh, i mean it's a new way of implementing callback functions so what you can do i'll show you something uh, yeah, so I'll show you in something because yeah, I don't have time much. So I'll take one more session on this. But I, before leaving, I'll show you something. If I open a Node.js or Node thing, I will create a. I'll create a. I mean, uh, I'll create a uh, function. 
inside a set timeout. So what set timeout do does is uh, it runs the function and un uh, after some time. So so I'll keep it as four thousand. So we should enter this. So you can see that after four seconds, the first has been consoled. So now what I'll do, I will, yeah. So what I'll do, I will do one more after uh, after that. I will add one more second. So if you are doing the same thing in C plus plus, what we will do? It will wait for the previous function to get over, and then the, it will run the second function. For example, in Python, if you see, time dot sleep is a function like set timeout. So if you use time dot sleep. It will plus first sleep till four seconds and then run the second function. But uh, in the case of JavaScript, it does an asynchronous task. So whenever you run it, so it automatically runs the second function before it. So and then it runs the first function. So it doesn't wait for the first function to get run. It uh, does the second function and uh, yeah. So this this is the asynchronous task. So the issue comes when you want to do some kind of synchronous operations. For example, if you don't uh, do any synchronous operation in case of requests, so while you are doing any fetch request or you are doing some kind of request to the server, so the issue will be like uh, before even the data com comes inside your uh, application or server, your uh, code will run. So, and this is an issue because you don't want to run the code until and unless the data comes from your server. So. Yeah, you should know that uh, data has already been received, and then you should run the server. Uh, then, then you should run the code. Okay, so the uh, whatever code you want to run, right? You want to check the data, whatever you receive from the server is correct or not. So that all code can be run once this uh, data has been received from the server. So for that reason, we can't use this kind of uh, uh, approach where we will save the data into uh, if you see in Python, you used to do request and then store the data in kind of response and then later on use the response uh, for our own operations. But for in this case, we can't do it the similar way because uh, as I have already mentioned, it's asynchronous. So what we have to do, we have to use dot then or it's a callback function. For example, if you want to know about callback function, you can check in W3 schools. So what the callback functions means you have to um, you have to assign a uh, callback function to a function and it only runs when a specific uh, function is run so in this scenario if you see uh, yeah so this is a function okay so this is a function up to this it's a function don't look at the then thing you just look at this up to this so this is a function now what I want, I want to run the next function. That is, I want to use the data from the server after the first function is run. That is this function is run. So that's why instead of creating one more line and then using the same data, what I'll do, I will add as a chain. So this is a chain. In the chain, I'll add that after receiving the data, I will convert that data into JSON object. And then uh, I will console log, log the data. So yeah, so dot then helps you in uh, in uh, uh, making your tasks synchronous. So this will help you like uh, if you want to do some kind of synchronous operations. So yeah, yeah since you have got it, I'll go to the next thing. So yeah, so so that means in our request also we have to use this then object 
without that we we, we can't uh, do any kind of request so yeah one more thing is like every year javascript uh, community they change the uh, they update the javascript language compilers and all so every time a new kind of javascript comes out uh, like es5 es6 es7 es uh, like it's like uh, every new es if it comes it comes out with a new way of using the javascript so initially the people used to use var so var is a implementation of variable so and also for constant they used to use constant but right now if you see with es es6 there was a big uh, changes that was uh, that was uh, taken out so the instead of using var we will be using let so yeah so i mean we couldn't complete today's session so i will uh, till now what i have explained try to look on and look onto this i don't have much time so i'll tell in the next uh, session how to use this fetch object and receive these data from the server and uh, yeah and uh, yeah you when you do some kind of sign in or sign up what it will do it will take the password using big crypt or whatever library i have already shown you so using big crypt it will it will uh, hash the uh, password and then store it in our uh, hasura database so in the next tutorial i will tell you how to write this entire code where you will be uh, seeing how to generate this random string and uh, hashing it down and then store it in storing it into the server and yeah and after that i will teach you how to connect your hasura database uh, i mean there is kind of authorization or authentication required for your database so how to connect that hasura database into your code uh, yeah into it to your authentication server so yeah so with this i want to wrap it up so yeah since we are going slow we i will try to increase the frequency of the tutorial and also i'll take the tutorial tomorrow um, and yeah and most probably five six tutorial and everyone will be split up into their favorite uh, uh, language or uh, into into their favorite topic and everyone will be given some projects and yeah and there'll be specific i mean everyone will have their oh, own like i will be taking webinars for each of you seeing each of you people